Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. You know who it is. Uh, so go on ahead and uh, hit that share button first because like and subscribe benefit me. But the share button, well, you know, that benefits the masses and the message is more important than the messenger. In order for the message to be more important than the messenger, there has to be a moral component to it and not just one man's opinion. It wouldn't be fair, right? So, if otherwise, it would not be fair. So, there's a moral component to what I'm going to tell you. And the first moral component that I want the listeners and audience to understand is that the white Western civilization, the white Western world, cannot be the moral equal of other people. It's not because they're white. It's not because they're Western. It's because they're oppressors. And their history is all about oppression. It goes beyond uh, the usual um, that to which white folks love to refer about expansionism and uh, fighting over territory that's happened between people since uh, the beginning of recorded human history and certainly before. It's not just that. It is the outright crushing. You see, before you fall for that, let me remind you that in the motherland, uh, between two tribes that recently had a nasty civil war that ripped a country apart, from which the country is now uh, nicely recovering, uh, one tribe came in and began to dominate another, but they took on the language and the religion of the tribe they dominated. This is why it is that today you've got Tutsi, but they don't speak any form of the ancient uh, Somali language that their ancestors spoke. They now speak uh, the same language as the Hutu. And it took on the religion of the Hutu, though they remained in power for a long time. So, while the Hutu and the Tutsi have never had um, this uh, great egalitarian relationship, the fact is that uh, what they had was nothing compared to what the Belgians did to either one of them. And so you can't sit up here and say that they are, in fact, some kind of moral equal to other people. You just can't do it. Now, that being said, with all of this talk of Eidos versus non-Eidos, um, Eidos is nice as a descriptive term. And really, it should be spelled with two A's because even though the Irish Americans were not necessarily enslaved, they're still going to lie to confuse it because not all of them are even lying. A lot of them actually think that they were enslaved in the U.S. Uh, under other than indentured servitude. So they're not all lying. If they tell you the Irish were enslaved, they will lie too. However, in order to avoid the confusion, we should spell it with two A's if we're just trying to be descriptive and technically correct. African-American descendants of slaves because, hey, look, you don't want to call yourselves African, some of you. Well, nigga, that's your problem. What, what is this move to push out African anyway? And I'm calling, I'm talking about you his Hebrew Israelites. What is the problem with calling yourselves African? Everybody black ain't African. I, a lot of you like to say this. Well, see, the thing is, you might look at black people outside of Africa, let's say in Melanesia. But when you look at these people outside of Africa in places like Melanesia or in places like uh, pockets of Bangladesh and India and Pakistan, you might try to tie them in to some sort of Hebrew ancestry. But then when you look at people in the motherland from which they know we came and we know we came, then all of a sudden you want to try to not tie them in and say that you don't really give a rat's behind about them anyway. What else, other, what else is that other than white supremacy? What is this anti-African strain going through our community? Some say, well, you know, this is because of their problems with African-Americans. Okay, now that's a valid reason to have a problem with anybody. However, when you don't spend time with them, you don't understand that the one group of Africans that has had a problem historically with African-Americans categorically was actually the same group of Africans that had a problem with other Africans and other Africans had issues with them categorically. And who was that? Well, Nigerians themselves told me it was them. They said this. See, let's take a look at the conflict between Pakistan and Bangladesh as an example. I'm going to relate this to what, what it has to do with us. 
because we think that we're just so different from everybody else when in fact we are different, uh, mostly based on phenotype and how others re have reacted to us. But we think that, that, that we think that what goes on between us does not go on between other people. And that's where we're wrong. Bangladesh and Pakistan are not friends. They used to be one country shortly after the independence of India and then the partition between India and Pakistan. Bangladesh was East Pakistan. Was today Pakistan was West Pakistan. They, they were not one contiguous territory. However, they were one nation, politically speaking. Well, guess what happened? The Bengalis are dark and they were poor. You already know what was going to happen in that case. We are, I don't have to tell you. That's where the conflict started. How do I know this is what really started the conflict? Well, not only did I see some of the tapes from the 70s when this argument started, but the other way that I know about this is that the Pakistani people in the United States themselves told me this. Their kids told me. We didn't start. They, they, their kids told me our parents started this conflict because Bengalis were poor and darker. That was the main thing. Everything else was an offshoot of that. If they had been wealthier or paler skinned, Either one, really, but especially paler skin, we would have let them off the hook for any other debates or cultural disagreements we might have had. We never cared about them. We felt that they were a burden on us, even though we're both Muslim, and we didn't want to. We, we just didn't want to uh, carry that burden. A big old extra crowded country full of dark skinned poor people who speak a different language, even though they're Muslim, praying next to us. I mean, if they were one country, they might have demanded equal, uh, equal marriage rights, and we didn't want to become darker. I mean, this is what Pakistanis have told me. They've told me Bengalis are humble, and they don't go around starting fights and arguments with people. And when I started spending time with both, I found this to be the case. Pakistan's Independence Day, you think it was another Eid, another Muslim holiday. No, it's not. Bangladesh's Independence Day, you never know about it. So you see, there is something to that. Now, I'm not saying that Bengalis are perfect, but in terms of actually hating people, no, they don't even hate black folks like, like other folks in the subcontinent are taught to do. They may not want to be any darker, but they don't hate us. The victims of brainwashing, but they don't have any sort of uh, aggressive anti-black stance. Now, why am I taught telling you about this? Why am I taking up to seven minutes and beyond to tell you about this? Well, I'm telling you this because, see, when it comes down to it, between uh, uh, Eidos and non-American black people, we tend, we're beginning to take on more of an anti-African strain. And I addressed this yesterday. Now we should react when people start effing up. I've always agreed with that. Yes. Start reacting. They screwing up, get on them. I've always said this. However, when we disagree with each other, this is not a reason for us to turn around and start pushing each other away to the point that we now need somebody else to come in and help either one of us. This is not something we, because b believe you me, we sit up here and start bickering amongst ourselves. We'll start arguing over whether we should accept uh, the help of the Chinese or the help of the white man. Neither one of them has our best interest at heart. At all. So this being said, now that we know this, we understand this. I'm going to say that this, uh, I'm going to give you my conclusion, and it's for more reasons. If African Americans and continental Africans are going to get into a beef and we start pushing each other away, I will sell you niggas up the river and side with the Africans. Now, what's the reason for that? I didn't say I would sell you up the river and side with the Nigerians. Why is that? Well, because the Nigerians are the ones who have the issues. And Nigerians have told me this the same way that Pakistanis have told me that the elders started the fight with Bangladesh. Nigerians have told me it is the elders who have the issues with not just African-Americans, but with even each other and with other nationalities in Africa and with Caribbean black folks. They have told me our elders are like this. They're very tribal. Therefore, they're very tribalistic and regionalistic even before they become nationalistic. So when it's just us in the room, we make fun of each other. A foreigner walks in, we gang up on the foreigner. A Ghanaian walks in, we start getting on them. A non-African walks in, then we forget about the Ghanaian and start getting on the non-African. If you're really black, I mean, if you're really dark skinned or if you're really pale, we gang up on you. We're just like that. That's what they told me. I'm not saying it's out of hatred, but what I'm saying is if, if the issue you have is with a particular group, you may have to start hanging out with different types of people to find out what the pattern is. You think that it's Africans that have an issue with us. No, it's not. They copy our music. 
the music that we got from back home and, and had to play in a different form when we got into the Americas in general, yeah, they start copying that now. It's their own music we done. <laughs> They're copying it. They're taking on a lot of our customs and our ways, the good and the bad. Unfortunately, a lot of the bad, too. But the point is, that's not the, uh, the behavior of a people that hate you and look down on you. They don't look at you and look down on you about everything. They look up to you for certain reasons and down on you for other reasons, which is a very reasonable stance to take. You can look at Liberians and you will see a lot of similarities. You can look down on them for many things and you can look up to them for many things. It's a reasonable stance to take. The more you know about them, the more you're going to do both because of what you know. That's how that works. But if they're not walking around with a grudge against us, and you niggas are starting to, because of one nationality and really one age group within a specific tribe, within a specific region, within that nationality, is it, you gonna let them represent the whole of your home continent to you? Then yeah, I'm gonna say, okay, well, they were smarter about this, we weren't, so I'm not gonna side with us against them. I shouldn't even have to use the word us and them to describe this. Now, if you want to have a beef with Nigerians, be very careful even about that because you have to know that it is a specific age group within a specific tribe, within a specific region that has issues with everybody else too, let alone you. Now, if you want to take issues with them, I'm side with you against them. You want to side against the stereotypical closed-minded Igbo nigger from the Lagos metro area that's causing us problems. Okay, fine. That means that you're leaving out even the Igbos that ain't talking that shit. I'm aside with you because you were careful about it. But you start talking about dim Africans. The hell you mean dim Africans? Ghanaians ain't got a problem with African Americans. They don't agree with everything we do. We don't agree with everything they do, but they don't have a problem. You go back and they welcome you. I know this. I've never been to Ghana, but I know because my neighbors who lived across the street from me went to Ghana and they said it. They want to go back. My ex-wife's new husband goes to Ghana regularly. He says they're ready, ready for us to go back. They're looking for it. Africa is home and most of them are ready to take you back even when they're from the part that from which we were not kidnapped They're ready to take us back. None of us were taken from South Africa. We do not have Zulu ancestry or Osa ancestry for that matter We can go to South Africa and they're ready to take us back that same country that we keep hearing about is is uh, Afrophobic or xenophobic. They're ready to take us back Do they have episodes of violence? It was in two neighborhoods in one city Johannesburg two neighborhoods in one city where this happened. Did this happen before? It did. You know what I found out? It was because an East African community had a crazy member. He felt up some little girl and they were about to try to uh, uh, muddle things up so that he could fly out the country before the police could get to him and they got attacked first. But it was one nationality. Unfortunately, at that time, that community was new. It was some Ethiopians. So many people in South Africa were still in that phase where you learn how to tell the difference between Somalis and Ethiopians. And so they started going after Somalis and Ethiopians. And also, um, a Somali shop owner, one, was flirting with a Zulu woman, and the Zulu knew that they couldn't flirt with no Somali woman, so they whooped his behind. Later, the jealousy came into play. But you, African-American, Eidos, you can go to South Africa, and they will take you. Fine. Welcome back home. Because obviously, you ain't going there just for the money. Does that mean you ignore Afrophobia or xenophobia? I'm not asking you to do that. I'm simply asking you to not sit up here and just start pointing uh, fingers and sweeping. You have to understand that white folks aren't going to report the news very accurately anyway, especially when it concerns us. You niggas can't fall for everything they say. You got to ask people on the ground what is really going on there. What did you see? And you got to ask two or three. Actually, you got to ask uh, six of them at least because each one will know something the other one doesn't know. D do you niggas realize this? Well, let me ask this. Do you niggas even think about it? That's the main, main um, and the more important question. And the answer is, hell no. You don't. You don't think about it. You don't ask yourselves uh, this, these, these um, critical questions. You just take what Master Charlie, old line behind, says on CNN and you go with it. They're going to have you thinking that all of South Africa is dangerous. Matter of fact, I'm not going to South Africa for this winter vacation because my wife heard about it and she said they'll attack me. I told her they're not going to attack you because I'm not even going to stay in Johannesburg if we go. We're going to go where it's warm, hot and humid and they ain't attacking people there. That's, that's over with over there. She said, no, I don't feel safe. I'm not going. I don't blame her. But the, but the facts are different. This is something that happens to a lot of us.
If you get your stuff together and you're going after specifically those of our race from any nationality that are nationalistic and tribalistic and very divisive, I'm going to be with you in that. If you're going to sit up here and start letting uh, one person convince you that a much broader category of people is your enemy. And you lose sight of who our real enemies are and what they really look like, then best believe I will not, I won't even sell you niggas out. I will openly tell you I'm against you now and I will work against your interest. And I will go around the world and I will say, yes, I'm African American and we ain't shit. I will go into the motherland and say this. I will go in and I will say, look, before you take any of us into your country, why don't you let me vet the visas? I will do that. I will sit up and say, look, I'll go to the African Union and tell them, listen, check this out before. And then you'll know who I am in real life, because I will say to the African Union, when you start issuing these passports before you issue them to any African-American, let me vet them. I'll do an investigation and I'll head a team of investigators and we'll grow this thing as the application numbers grow. The investigative team will grow and we will see who who uh, we will determine um, who is safe to give a visa to. Somebody that I know is for black folks and is fair and even minded, especially a Pan-African. BGS Edmore sends one in and I find this out and say, oh, yeah, yeah, this, this guy, give him an African Union passport. Let him travel the continent. As an example, some of you other niggas be like, oh, hell no. This guy's probably been hired by some crackers to go into the, the continent and stir stuff up. Uh uh. No, don't don't get that nigga no passport. I'm telling you. I'm doing what I do in recording what I record because I want what's right for you and what's fair and what's just. The minute you niggas start getting on the side of injustice and what's wrong, I will sell us. I will betray us. Hopefully I'll never have to. Hopefully what I've said one day won't be true anymore. Until that day, hopefully what I've said is a benefit. Salam alaikum.